have some of the best products. I see you have some pioneers here. We have the best cocoa in the world. The best coffee in the world. The best ginger in the world. One of the best bauxite in the world. So you are telling me that the eternal father has not blessed this land? We have one of the best quality water in this world. Not in the Caribbean. We're the leader in the hospitality industry in the world. We have the best tourism minister in the world. And it's not me, says so. He was rated as the number one tourism minister of the world. At one stage, we are the best stock market in the world. So again, the eternal father, hasn't he blessed this land? Now we have crime. You have the highest crime in our world too. But what it has shown is that we're good at what we do. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. We're just good at what we do. So in you showcasing your giants, your giants are good at what they do. I had a conversation this morning with culture cravings. Where is she? Oh. She has a story. Her story is what she turned into a business. And then she showed me something. They are not a plant. Which is where I am from. I'm from Anata Bay. And Anata Bay got its name from the Anata plant. The Anata plant is not there now. I mean, I told her I think I might have seen it once or so. Maybe if I could look good, I might see it. But that is where that town got its name. And it was used a lot for the coloring. And of course, she was educated me. I used for stomach disorders and diarrhea and ulcer and diabetes. So we're showcasing an upcoming giant. Not to mention wholesome. I tell people I want it. I've never had the bread, but I want to eat the bread. Because that is a dominant bread in Mandeville. Grant you know that I was told again that, you know, it's basically acquired by other persons. And there's a conglomerate that operates bakeries across Jamaica. So someday I think you're eating a different bread. But maybe the same ingredient. Right, but I'm awesome. But then Island Blue, Baron Hall, I mean, I see it in the airports, I see it in the supermarkets, a giant. And I remember cocoa butter, I mean, Pioneer and cocoa butter, right? They don't do it anymore? Cocoa butter, because we used to have it in the pharmacy, selling in the pharmacy, and it was, I know it was from Pioneer, and we often wonder if by the time it leaves, Mandel, which is cool, and which king said it doesn't melt. Because it's cocoa fat, right? And of course, um, sippers. Not slippers, right? Sippers. <laughs> so, and I was told that it's in my package, so I know when I go home this evening, I'm, I have to make six ounces in one. So I have to go and make 12 ounces, right? To get a full drink. And then I pick a pepper. But then I asked a question earlier when I was storing um, about spur tree, spur tree spices. Because I was asked to tour the plant early when I became the Minister of State. And the plant was in Kingston. So I went and toured the plant. And recently you'd have seen they have listed as an um, IPO. And uh, IPO has done very, very well. I mean, the stock has done pretty well. And I was saying to Madame Culture that I hope it's geared to export because spur tree spices, almost everything that they produce is for export. And that's one of the things I want to emphasize here today. 
in your giants, Miss Annette, I would like you to encourage them to export. We can always use whatever is left for ourselves. But for us to become great and for us to become giants, we cannot produce and feed just and sell to those three million people. That makes no sense. You will not be rich. You will not be highly successful if you confine that to Jamaica and three million people. So in your consultancies, I would really like you to encourage all these, especially up and coming giants, gear your market and your products for the export market. And how will you do that? Because some will ask, where will I get the money from? I tell people that I was born poor like most Jamaicans. My mother sold in a market and I used to have to sell back juice in the market to my mother in an Bay. And my two sisters would sell on either side of the market, selling black pepper, seasoning, salt, etc., etc. My mother would go to Kingston and buy panties and school uniform and come back and sell them. So most of us are poor people. No matter what we acquire in this life, you must never forget where you're coming from. So when you're small, I'd want to encourage you to think big and to be big. But then one of the things you will say is that you have no financing to do it. And it's a challenge. When I was going to business and people say you don't have the money, I said, well, at least I have an idea. And I'm going to work on that idea. And I don't like to, sp I don't like to speak about myself. I mean, and it says she will look it up. I, I don't like to speak about myself. But having no money was never... A factor that stopped me. Never. I started with whatever I have. And I still have that concept and mentality today. That if I want to build a house and I can build one room, I'm going to start with one room. I'm not going to try and build a whole house. Because if I know I don't have the money to do it, I, I can't finish it. And I'm going to start it, they're going to sit down and look at me every day and they're going to stress me out. So I build the one that I can build, I build a one room. And when I built my first plaza, I built just the, just the one shop I wanted to be in. The one shop. That plaza now has 15 shops. Started one. And I decided to build the one. And when I could build three more, I built three more. And when I could build three more, I built another three. And I borrowed like everybody else. And I used some of the earnings from the business and do it. But what this government has done, which you have asked on it, is that we are creating an environment to allow people to grow and prosper. We believe in that concept called prosperity. And the prosperity we don't mean necessarily that you have enough money in your pocket, you know. It means that you have the opportunity, you have the way, you have the enabling environment that creates that conditions that allow you to grow. So we want to create that enabled environment and one of the concepts of this ministry, which is the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, is that we are an enabler, a facilitator. So you tell us the problems you have and we'll find a solution to the problem or, or point you in a direction that you can solve that problem. So when you speak about finance, we will say to you, the government in its budget presentation in 2020, 21, the Ministry of Finance announced a $60 billion surf program. $60 billion Jamaican dollars. And out of that $60 billion Jamaican dollars, $5 billion was dedicated to MSME, small, medium, micro, small, and medium sized enterprises. Dedicated to it. The DBJ had a program that was geared towards technology, $1 billion, that you could get a loan. And before the loan, you could get a grant, a grant of $200,000 to help you to retool your business on the technology side. Because we, with the pandemic, we realized that was one of the problems that our businesses have, most businesses are not transforming. So we created a $200 million 
um, 200,000 grant that persons could access. And they could also access $800,000 at 4% interest. So the, gov the government was creating that enabling environment to give you an opportunity. We have several other programs through JAMPRO and JBDC and DBJ. We have the Ignite program with DBJ. We have the Big E program with JAMPRO, DBJ, and JBDC. And we have several other programs. We have the Export Max program geared towards export for small businesses that wants to export. Export Max, we're in our third iteration. I think we're in Export Max 3 now. Grant to Export Max program is every two years. You take the companies and you handhold them for two years. But what we're trying to do now, we're trying to accelerate that to have it every year. Because we have so many businesses that really wants to grow and they can't wait for two years. And we agree. So we're trying to see if we can look at how we can have this every year. So there's always a rolling amount of companies going forward. Again, because we believe that the eternal Father has blessed our land. And therefore, we have to look around and see what is happening and see how best we can make it happen. The other thing I'd like to speak about is a challenge that I know I'm facing. And I know some person in manufacturing. And incidentally, in the pandemic, in the pandemic, Jamaica is one of the few countries that has grown. I mean, we're still below, in most cases, our 2019 figures. But we're growing again. Tourism is almost back to its 2019 level. Manufacturing was our saving grace. Construction grew year on year in the pandemic. And the problem we're facing now is labor issues. And you'd have heard many speakers speaking about it. The unemployment rate is 6%, the lowest in the history of Jamaica. And for persons who know econ, we're almost approaching full employment. And full employment doesn't mean that everybody have a job. It's persons who are actively seeking and is willing to work. Because you know there are some people that don't want to work. So they are not even captured in the labor force. But for the statistical methods and information that is available, we are at our lowest unemployment level in the history of Jamaica. So what that is doing is creating an issue for the quality of the staff that you're getting to work nowadays. Because in my businesses, sometimes it's a challenge. I used to have staff that would be with me for years until they're ready to retire or ready to move off. Right now we have staff turned over because we just can't get the quality of the staff we need anymore. And it's going to be a problem. And this is something that I know it is not lost on policymakers. And when you hear some of the things that, boy, you might have to have labor from elsewhere. There are sometimes people, you know, fuss about it. In some cases, quite correctly so, because we will never give up a job that a Jamaican can get to somebody else. But as I said earlier, for small businesses and for medium businesses and to large businesses, for you to produce for the world, you're going to need enough labor to produce for the world. And quality labor at the same time. So I'm encouraging Annet in your consultancies and when you go around, especially to schools, you need to start preparing the graduates' minds for the world of work and what is required to be a good worker. Because it's not about turning up and collecting a pay. It cannot be. It's what is your contribution to productivity? And how will you produce a quality product? And it's a challenge that we have in producing quality product because maybe when Pioneer, Pick a Pepper, 
our island blue is producing. And if they put a label on a container and it's slightly lean, and they said, no, the label must be straight. And I said, boss, I know nothing that. I know nothing that. I just want liquor thing. That is not producing for the world. That's producing for your house. Because the world needs perfection in what you do. So they want a consistent taste. The flavor must be the same. The look must be the same. The consistency of the product must be the same. It can't be thick one time and thin one time. Or it can't be bright yellow and half yellow. Or bright green and half green. It cannot be. So in this year of our 60th anniversary and our Diamond Jubilee, we have to start think, to think differently, to think generously and honestly so that Jamaica under God can increase in beauty, fellowship, and prosperity. This is the Jamaica that we need. This is the Jamaica that we are creating. So we, we can't say we're young anymore. Young is 1 to 10 or maybe up to 20. These young ladies here, maybe they're what, 25? Maybe young still? No. The 40s. But maybe that's a new young, you know. <laughs> because... Everybody realize that gone are the days when people are 40 and 50 and look like 40 and 50. They don't look that way anymore. And it's because of the quality of life. The air that we breathe, the microclimate that we have. And in my, in my list of products earlier, I forgot to leave out to add in ganja. One of the best one in the world. But do you know that they've always asked, how is this small country produce all these number one stuff? How? And people say, um, both can run fast because the yam is eaten in Trelawney. So we produce the best yam. Or, you know, what is it? So recently I toured a farm. I toured a farm in St. Mary with the Minister of Agriculture. Because we're very big on pushing export in agriculture, in manufacturing, agribusiness, services. We're very big on pushing these. And you see them in all over the place. So I toured this farm, Jamaica Producers Farm, in where I'm from, in St. Mary. They're actually in my constituency. So they're very big on pineapple growing now, right? So they grow a lot of pineapple. So we're, we're known for bananas and plantings and very good banana and plantings. And I'll soon tell you why. And you, can't, you can't get it anywhere else. But they were preparing the land. Now, you know, the, the good thing about it, there was this flat land and they were preparing the land. But they were preparing the land like this. So it's undulating. Right? And everybody was wondering, why are they preparing the land like this? Why not flatten the whole land and harrow it and put your drip irrigation in and stuff like that? Like you're seeing St. Elizabeth, whatever, whatever. But there's a reason. And it shows you where we are going in the 60th anniversary and where we are going as a country. It's not just finding land and decides, boy, I'm going to plant banana. And I plant banana. That's rubbish. I must know if, one, the land is good to plant banana. And two, where's the market I'm going to sell this banana to? And what is the taste of those persons in that market? So we'll have the pick of pepper, and we'll have mango, and all these other things, right? So, what is the market you are thinking? So, so, back to the story of the land. Why they grow the land like this? They grow the land like this because they have invested in technology. 
the technology is not to just find out what is in the soil, but what will allow the pineapple to grow its best. And what is that? The pineapple does not like water at its roots. So we plant the pineapple everywhere and we stick a pineapple and say, boy, yeah, we are waiting for the pineapple to grow and give us a nice pine. But no, the plant is like this because it doesn't like water at its root. But to go a step further, they imported a technology from Israel and they stick a device in the ground and the device has a Wi-Fi connection and it connects to a computer and it tells you the water content in the ground. So remember the pineapple doesn't like a lot of water at its root but if it drains fast then it's going to be devoid of water. So you have to now find a way to say how much water is now needed for that pineapple to grow. And when that data comes back they turn on the irrigation system and it waters the pineapple but they take it a step further so now they're going to use drones and the drones is going to fly over and the drones is going to collect the data itself but the drone is also going to count all the pineapples in the field so you don't have to use a man to count them anymore so the drone will fly over and the drone will count every single pineapple. But not only that, it will look at the size of the pineapple. It will check to see if there is any fungus on those plants. And if yes, then the same drone is going to fly over and spray them. You remember days gone by, I don't know if you know, but when I was in a be growing up, we used to have spray planes that would fly over and spray the plantains and the bananas. You don't need that anymore. You have the drones. So that is where Jamaica at 60 is going. We don't need the subsistence farming anymore. If you want to farm a plot of land for your family, fine. But I go back to what I said earlier. We cannot become rich and prosperous by feeding and growing and supplying for three million people. Remember I mentioned spur tree spice before? And I asked them if they're from spur tree, and they said no. But they get a lot of the products from the region. But what are they doing now? They, remember, they're exporting everything, you know. But what are they doing? They're setting up a plant in Holland Bamboo. Holland Bamboo. And the government through AIC, I believe, has leased out a lot of those former lands to individuals. And one of the, one of the hallmark of the projects, project was that if you lease out all these lands to farmers and small farmers, you need to put a processing plant right where they are. So when the plant is scallion and the onion and the pepper, they're not to travel all the way to Kingston anymore. They supply it right in that manufacturing plant that just create all the pulp, etc., and just transport that pulp now to Kingston. That is Jamaica at 60. So that is a mindset that I really want persons who are listening to have. That whatever we do and did before cannot be the way forward cannot be if you want to become wealthy for your children and that's one thing about this government we preach wealth prosperity because we believe in it we believe that every Jamaican has a God-given right to a good quality of life and therefore we must create that atmosphere and we must create those things that allow persons to achieve that potential that they have because we believe that every Jamaican is a giant every Jamaican given the opportunity can be a giant every single one of us so at the end of the day here I hope that it's not just about showcasing what we have but to learn from these experiences 
and these experiences should push people further to become giants of their own. And I really hope that Annette will take this, not just for here, but take it elsewhere so that persons can see what is it that we are trying to build as a country. In my ministry, there are several divisions. We have the industry divisions, division, we have the manufacturing division, we have the commerce division, so we have a number of divisions in the ministry. And the divisions are not just to be dividing lines, but to allow us to concentrate properly on different areas of Jamaica's development, and especially our agribusiness, our commerce, our trade, and to develop that. We have within the ministry the Exim Bank, which is Exim is Import Export or Export Import Bank. And one of the things the Exim Bank was always geared towards is export to allow persons to get letters of credit, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so that they can export their goods but get the money to do their activity and then when they get paid, they can pay by the loan. The export, the Exim Bank was also doing a number of small business loans because in the ministry we had closed a micro agency that we had in the ministry and transferred the money 200 million dollars to exim bank to unlend to small operators the msme sector because we believe strongly in the msme sector i also mentioned that we had the 60 billion program and 5 million was was for msme in the 2020 to 2023 budget, 13 billion. So we moved from 5 billion to 13 billion. Again, geared towards MSMEs, micro businesses, because the government again recognized the importance of trying to pull these businesses up as quickly as possible because there's so much potential that exists. You'd have seen two missions recently to Jamaica. There's a mission that came out of Saudi Arabia, out of the Far East. I think it's Saudi Arabia, out of the far, far East. Because we are showcasing Jamaica as a, one of those nodes for free zones. And we're developing a number of clusters of different types of free zones, trying to attract a number of mega projects to Jamaica to occupy those free zones. But there are two things of note were, were in, in recent times. There was a mission from the Cayman Islands. And you'd have seen the paper of a person who read the paper or listen to the news. There was a mission also at Denby from the Bahamas. And if you look at those two comments from those missions, they literally want Jamaica to produce for them. Remember, Jamaica is a very large country now compared to these places. A very large country compared to these places. So when you heard the, the, the team from the Bahamas, they can learn so much from Jamaica. Jamaica can produce and sell to them. And it's the same thing with the Cayman Islands. A lot of persons are looking at what they call near shore markets. Markets are not far from where they are. Because what happened in the pandemic, and there will be future pandemics, you know, and there will be future logistical issues. They call it Um, well, logistical issues. We are, take for instance, we want things from China. And because of whatever conflict in Ukraine, because of the lockdown in China, it takes forever to reach here. So everybody is not looking at everywhere that is close to them because people need to survive and thrive. So they are looking at these near shore markets. So Jamaica is a perfect near shore market for many places. We are just an hour and 20 minutes from the largest market in the world. We are one of the largest natural harbor in the world. We are in a shipping lane that most mega ship going on to different places passes. So Jamaica sits at a pivotal point where we can benefit from so many things. So again, eternal Father bless our land. 
So let us use the opportunities that we have. Bauxite will not be here forever. And we have seen that. We are hoping that that large plant would have, in Nain, would have been back up by now, but it's not for whatever, for you know, all the reasons that exist. But we have so much other things to be great about. And before I take my seat, I'll go back to why I tell that the bananas and plantings in St. Mary is better than anywhere else. And why I said it is not me saying it. The gentleman from, that is the manager for the plant in Jamaica Producers, is from Honduras. We can produce banana like Honduras or Costa Rica. When we produce, say, six acres of banana, they're producing 600,000 acres of banana. So we can't compete with them. And so Chiquita produce bananas in all these South and Central America places because of the volume. But they, what we have, they don't have. The sweetness of our planting and bananas, they can't capture. That's why we have the best one in St. Mary. <laughs> and I say it's not me, so. <laughs> so that's what the research has shown. So I would like to encourage you, Annette, to, irrespective of the fact that you didn't get much sponsors, uh, it was a pleasure for me to come. For me to go anywhere in Jamaica to speak to any of my fellow Jamaicans. I love to do it. And I really turn down an invitation, no matter how large it is or how small it is, because I say I know where I'm coming from. And one day, we will all be great. And we'll all be giants in what we do. Thank you very much.